Hello, everybody. This is Dr. Novak again. One question I'm asked maybe once every month is, how can I improve my canister filter output? People are buying canister filters and they're rated, let's say, at 350 gallons an hour. And to be honest with you, you're lucky if you get 125 gallon an hour out of the canister. And this is one question I'm asked at least once a month where someone says, I bought a canister filter. It was rated at this. It doesn't matter whether it's the Eheim, Sun Sun, uh, Oase, uh, uh, Fluvo. Uh, it doesn't matter whether it's the Fluvo 4, Fluvo 6. It's the same thing. It was rated at this output. And even myself, it was rated at a certain output. Uh, the pump is rated at 8,000 liters per hour on the uh, F-Zone 15-liter canister filter. If you remember, I said it could be improved, stronger pump, because it's such a big canister filter of 15 liters. And a lot of people asked me that. And I told them, well, <clears throat> in order to really fix your canister filter is easy. Well, you know, and you always get the, if it was easy, why am I asking? Well, it is easy. It's just the laws of physics you have to overcome. Whenever you deal with canister filters, we all know that once you pack them up, put all your stuff in it, they don't pump anything, anything near what the manufacturer said. And unfortunately, everybody does it. Uh, a pump will be rated when it has no resistance. And uh, in order for it to pump out anything near what the manufacturer has said, you have to overcome resistance. But it's quite easy to do. First question I ask is, do you use quick dis disconnects? Yeah. What kind? You know, most people, believe it or not, use Eheim. There are other ones, but whatever they use, whether you use Eheim or another kind of disconnect, I said, well, then it's pretty easy to fix. So right now, if you're scratching your head, like, what do you mean it's pretty easy to fix? Just like the photo I'm showing you here, if you look closely, you can tell when it pumps faster, and you can tell when it pumps slower. And I did this on purpose. If you look at it right now, you can see it pumping slower. The output. But then, like, magically, you'll see it all of a sudden increase in its output. But that's really not magic. What you have to do to it in order to change it is actually get a, another pump. Now, you see the big difference? Now, the it's on. You see a big difference between the flow of the two? I'll uh, bring this up with back to back so you can kind of see the difference in the flow. But uh, what you do is you have to go out and buy a motor. Now, what you have here is a lot of, a lot of people think that, well, if I have a 5H opening, like let's say your um, Eheim 2217, I have a 5H opening, and the water is only going to go so fast through that 5H opening. That's correct. But it's capable of handling a lot more water than what is going out of the canister filter. Same as your you know, all canister filters. They just don't perform. So what you need to do then is you need to hook up a canister filter to an external pump. And I'll show you that just in a minute. Okay, so here it is, the inside of my aquarium cabinet. And with all these hoses hooked up, I just hooked this up just for demonstration purposes. But I used the motor from the uh, ADA canister filter just to show you. But since I'm using the Eheim Quick Disconnects, it's very easy to hook another motor up to your canister filter. And what you do is you hook up the motor 
as you can see, the hose goes out. You keep the power at 100%. The 1-20 means that the uh, F-zone filter motor is running at full speed. This motor, the ADA motor that I'm using, or the Awaki motor, the exit of the F-zone goes to the intake of the Awaki motor that was on the ADA canister filter. As you can see, it goes down and goes into the intake. Okay. And now it exits from there and goes all the way into, with quick disconnects, to the outlet. Now you're probably saying, well, how is this going to happen? First of all, when you do this, if the pump that I have here, the, uh, the blue pump is rated at 8,000 gallons per hour, or 8,000 liters per hour, but the Awaki pump is like 450, 475 per hour. What we have done when you do this, when you piggyback pumps, this is not uncommon to do. You get the pump that you're piggybacking a little stronger than the pump that's rated with your canister filter. So let's say if you have a canister filter like an Eheim 2217, I'm just using that as an example, okay? It pumps about 250 gallons an hour. You'd like to increase it. Well, there's a lot of resistance, so you're not going to get 250 gallons an hour. You'll probably be lucky if you get 125 gallons an hour, and that's about it. But let's say you don't want to get rid of the canister and you want to increase your output. Well, then you would get a pump. Let's say that pumps 375 gallons an hour or 400 gallons an hour, whatever will hook up to your 5 8 hosing because like, for example, 2217 uses 5 8 hosing, uh, 18 millimeter. So you get two new disconnects from Eheim so you can hook everything up and you hook up the second pump as you just saw. So the first pump's running at full speed. What this does is it lessens the resistance so you have one pump that's laboring to try to pump out. And because of all the resistance, it's going to be cut down. You had a second pump, though, to help pull. Almost like um, if you look at it like trains, you have instead of one engine, you use two engines to pull all the cars. So one engine isn't powerful enough. You use two engines. You're kind of using the same theory here. Instead of one motor and don't forget this motor can be built into the head it doesn't matter you get a stronger motor to hook up with quick disconnects to the head just as i've shown you in the picture when you turn on both motors the resistance now has been lessened so the second motor now will pull and because let's say that one's at 350 400 if it has a stronger output because the other pump is also pumping, it reduces the resistance to the second pump. And that's why you can get more output. So if the F-Zone can pump, let's say, 350 gallons an hour because of the 5H tubing, not using one inch, let's say, and it really can't quite make it because of the resistance, by adding a second pump that pumps faster, 450, I now have increased my output by 100 to 150 gallons an hour because the second motor is not seeing the resistance or the same resistance as the first motor or the uh, power head that's on your canister because it's actually helping the second motor and decreasing the resistance. So even though you'd only be pumping 125 gallons an hour, the stronger motor will take over and push your water and increase it by 100, 200 gallons an hour only because the resistance is gone. It, 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 of course, the laws of physics stand because you could only have water move so fast through a 5H hose. And if you have a 5H opening, it's only going to move so fast. But 
if it's not pumping anything near it, and I've seen lots of uh, um, videos like this with the Fluval 6s and 4, where people said, oh, the, the Fluval 4 or 6, one of those two, pumps 900 gallons an hour. The guy said, there's no way, no way this is going to pump 900 gallons an hour. It's just not going to do it. And it's true. By the time you get your canister all set up, by the time you get the hoses all on it, it's nowhere near the 900 gallons an hour as uh, it's been claimed. It's 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 we all know that it's nowhere even near that. Uh, it's going to be half or even less. Some people are really disappointed that it is far less than half. So 900 gallons an hour can turn into like uh, only 200 and you know, 50 gallons an hour or 300 gallons an hour. Well, that's a far cry from 900 gallons an hour. The way to overcome it is get your quick disconnects and just hook up a second pump that pumps as fast or faster than what you have. This will give you the versatility. Like, let's say I have this F-Zone canister. It's made out of stainless steel. I'm not going to get rid of the canister and buy another one. Canister filters are expensive. We all know that. They can go run up 300, 360 bucks for a nice canister filter. And if they're pumping nothing near of what the manufacturer has said, and we want to move to a larger tank or we want to move more water through the canister, there's no other way to do it except to piggyback the two pumps because then one is going to have less resistance. Now, if you think that the impeller to the first canister will be spinning faster, that's not going to hurt anything. It's a magnetic impeller. So the second impeller is going to take over. There's also another thing of adding two pumps. If you add, let's say, two 250-gallon-hour pumps to, let's say, a waterfall, let's example, you're actually pumping 500 gallons an hour through the waterfall because you added two 250 gallon an hour pumps. You just don't pump still 250 gallon an hour. You've you've doubled the amount of water going to your waterfall. It's what we're trying to do with the canister filter. It's a very simple, to, to hook this up, I bet you it took me no, maybe five, 10 minutes. It's that easy to hook up. So if you are dealing with a canister filter, you're disappointed in its output or you have a canister filter, you wish to switch it over to a bigger aquarium. Let's say you have it on a um, a 55-gallon and you're going to go to a 75-gallon or a 90-gallon like I have. Uh, you want to move some water. And you realize, I'm not moving enough water, so the first thing you're going to be thinking of, I have to get a larger canister filter to do the job for me because this one just is not pumping enough gallons per hour. Well, you can go on the internet and find inexpensive pumps that you can hook up, buy yourself some hosing, buy yourself the quick disconnect. All you need is one one uh, double quick disconnect if you're using Eheim or any other brand. One double quick disconnect and hook up your hosing and turn it on and you're going to see a huge difference in your output. Because the pump that, that just doesn't have the strength now is going to be helping the second pump and take away that resistance that's there. And then you're going to see a considerable amount of output without a considerable amount of output for, you know, cost-wise. Yes, I know Eheim quick disconnects are expensive. They, they do sell less inexpensive quick disconnects. But uh, if you are using Eheim, you will have to buy one set, whatever, a set of uh, 5 8 if you're using 5 8 hosing, will do. And then try to find a pump that will take the 5 8 And if you can, try to find one that pumps better than the pump you originally have on your canister filter. That's it in a nutshell. It's that simple. But I have this question asked to me at least once a month. How can I fix this? Because I don't want to buy a brand new canister filter, but I would like to get more gallons per hour out of my pump. Uh, slowing down a pump is a piece of cake. You know, to slow something down, nobody has any problems with that. To speed it up, there's where the problems come in. But anyhow, I thought I'd do this video just to show you. It's not hard to do. 
It's very easy. You hook it up. And of course, if you want to disconnect your canister filter, well, you still have the disconnect valves that you're going to use the same, but the first the the first pump that you hooked up to it, you just turn it off and close up the disconnect valves and then move your canister, do your maintenance, and then hook your canister back up to that pump. It's it's really that simple. You are going to notice a higher output or you may even notice the amount of output your canister filter claimed it would have. And it is very disappointing when you see people test these canister filters and their jaw drops because it's putting out nothing that they thought it should be putting out. And they're like, wow, I can't believe how little this canister filter is putting out. That's one way of solving it. Unfortunately, it's going to cost you a little bit of money, but you can usually buy uh, external pumps relatively inexpensive that put out a good amount of flow to them. And just adding that onto it will then speed up your canister filter considerably. And I mean, you could wind up with 100, 150 or more gallons per hour out of your canister filter easily to transfer that canister filter over to a larger tank. So anyhow, that's all for this video. I thought, uh, since it's a question that's constantly asked, I thought I would show everybody my little example, and it does make a huge difference. It really does. Trust me, it will make a huge difference. You, you, you'll Actually, you'll get irritated and say, well, this is the way it should be running. Yes, it is, but now, the resistance slows it down, and there's nothing you can do about that. And manufacturers, I think, inflate their gallons per hour of their canister filters anyway, just to get you to buy it, thinking you're going to get more output and turn over your tank even more. A little thing like an extra pump will help you. So, until next time, this is Dr. Novak. Thank you very much for watching. Subscribe to my channel.